Welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn how to deploy a Java web application into Azure App Service using GitHub Actions CACD pipeline. Let's say that you are working with a the team, they are developing Java based web application and then they wanted to migrate the Java web application into Azure Cloud. They wanted to use Azure App Service for hosting the Java web application. So how will you automate the entire process using GitHub Actions? That's exactly what we are going to talk about in this short video. So if you can look into this diagram, let's say that you are a DevOps engineer, you are closely working with the development team. They are committing their source code into GitHub and they are working on a Java based web application. So you wanted to leverage uh, GitHub Actions in order to create CACD pipeline. Uh, to build the Java web application using Maven and then deploy that Java web, web application into Azure Cloud. So how will you do that? That's exactly what we are going to learn in this video. So if you look at the prerequisite, yes, we need to have Java web application configured in GitHub. So this is the repository. So this is the Java web application, which we are going to deploy into Azure App Service hosted in Azure Cloud. And if you look at the next prerequisite, yes, we need to have Azure subscription in order to uh, create and then host our web application. So this is my Azure subscription. Okay, so this is where we are going to create an app service and then deploy our Java web application into that app service. So what is app service? So app service is nothing but it's a platform as a service model where you can deploy your application into Azure Cloud. It can be .NET application or Java application, Node.js, PHP or Python. So it doesn't matter, right? Irrespective of the technology stack, uh, you would be able to deploy your web application into uh, app service. In fact, you can also even, you know, host your REST APIs as well as mobile backend as well. Let's get started. So the way we are going to achieve this is Yes, we need to create a web app in Azure Cloud, obviously, right? Because that is where we are going to deploy. And then we need to configure our web app uh, in order to deploy using GitHub Actions. So I will also talk about that. And then finally, we need to create the workflow ML file and then add steps in the workflow ML file and then run the workflow ML file. And then finally, we need to make sure that whether our Java web app is deployed into Azure App Service or not. It's, it's a pretty straightforward in fact, there are a lot of things, uh, you know, we can achieve while creating the web app itself. So I'm, I'm going to show you everything one by one. Okay, great. So let's get started here. So first of all, we need to create a web app. So since I don't have web app created, I'm going to create brand new. But if you are using your existing web app, you can also, uh, you know, create a CACD pipeline for your existing web app as well. So let's start with uh, creating a new web app. So let's click on app services, uh, create web app. And I'm going to use my existing resource group. If you want, you can create a new resource group, doesn't matter. Let me go ahead and then give some name. So let me just give some name, my Java, uh, my super Java web app. So make sure this is completely unique, okay? Because it is going to create a website with this particular name, okay? And then uh, ours is uh, plain vanilla Java code. I'm going to leave it like that. And then the runtime stack is obviously Java. So I'm going to select uh, probably Java 11. For our web server stack, I'm going to select Apache Tomcat 10.0. Okay, great. And then OS, I would like to choose Linux. Uh, region, uh, I'm going to select where I'm actually close by. Perfect. And then the pricing plan for our uh, app service, um, I'm going to go with at least two gig uh, GB, one CPU. So that is the closest to one. So I'm going to go ahead and then select that. Perfect. I don't need any database. So I'm going to leave it as it is. So let's go to the deployment. So if you look at the deployment tab, so this is where we are going to configure how we can deploy our uh, web application into app service using GitHub Actions. So what we have to do is uh, we need to configure here, right? So let me actually go ahead and then enable this. Okay, so if you see here, so this is where we are going to configure our GitHub information. Okay, 
So we need to first click on this authorize. So let me give authorize Azure App Service. So as soon as you give, there you go. Do you all see here, guys? So do you all see here, guys? So I was able to, uh, you know, able I was able to authenticate with uh, GitHub. And then let's go ahead and then select our organization. Okay, there you go. And then let's also go ahead and then select our repository. There you go. So I have the repository selected. Perfect. And then uh, the branch name is main. So that is good. Once you select the branch name, everything is looking good over here. And then let's go ahead and then, you know, select basic authentication. Let's enable that. And then when you click on the uh, preview file, so it's going to show you how the GitHub action workflow file is going to look like. Okay, so let's click on preview file. Wow, there you go, guys. Do you all see here? So this was able to create the entire workflow AML file for us. Would you believe that? Okay, so there are some of the important things to actually note down is, so if you see here, yes, we are checking out the code, we are building, uh, I mean, we are installing Java 11 on the build agent, and then we are building using Maven, uh, and then we are uploading the war file into the GitHub workspace, and then finally, we have a separate, uh, you know, uh, task right a separate action uh, so we have two different stages i would say build and deploy okay and this is where we are going to deploy and then we are downloading the artifact from wherever we have uploaded and then finally we are deploying into azure cloud so if you actually see here so this is very important right so what this will actually do is this is going to go ahead and then uh, you know create uh, create an entry in a github repository with this value Okay, so this as a secret, so that is very important. Okay, so I think we are good over there. Uh, but again, it is up to you. You can copy this code and then you can customize your workflow ML file if you want to do that. Or, you know, when you go ahead and then say review and create, this will automatically create the workflow ML file for us. So I'm going to show you. So what I mean by that is if you see here, so right now we don't have anything created here, right? So we don't have anything over here. Okay, under action. Okay, so we don't have any AML file, anything created, right? But the moment you say review and create, uh, so this will do actually two things. It will uh, create the workflow AML file, it will commit into GitHub, and then it will also go ahead and then create this publish profile for us as well. Okay, this, this secret uh, entry. All right, so why don't we do that right now? So everything is actually looking good. Let me click on review and create. So what we are doing right now is we are just still creating that web app, right? So I think everything else looks good, uh, you know, to me. Let's click on create. So it's going to take, uh, you know, a few seconds uh, to create this web app and then get the, get the web app configured. All right, guys. So the web app got created. You can click on go to resource. So you can see that it is trying to come up. So while we are waiting for the web app to come up over here, let's also go to our GitHub. And then let's try to click on code. Wow, do you all see here? So this automatically created the workflow AML file for us. We just need to, you know, uh, fine tune this one. So that's all. And then let's also go ahead and then make sure that it was able to create that secret as well, right? So I will show you what you mean by secret. So this should have created this secret, okay? Let's also verify that as well. Let's go to settings of the repository, go to secrets, click on actions. Wow, there you go, do you all see guys? So a minute ago, the secret also got created, wonderful. So all we have to do is we just need to customize our workflow, okay? So before that, wow, there you go, guys. Do you all see that? So this is the web app which got created just now. Wonderful. So this is our uh, app service, right, which is actually up and running. So time to do the next step, which is just to go ahead and then build and deploy. Great. So let's get back to our AML file. You see here, I'm going to uh, make some changes for over here, right? Okay, so let me see here. Uh, so there are a couple of things what we are going to do is Yes, we are going to use the Java version 11, but
but let's see if if some anything anything was run okay so you can also see there you go so you see here right since it was already committed our uh, workflow AML file already got executed. So first thing is it says that the Java path is, I mean the pom.xml file it cannot find. You see here it says that there is no pom in the directory. Although we do have a pom.xml file, but if you see here, the pom.xml file resides inside my web app folder, okay? So we have to fix that. So let's, let's take care of it one by one. Okay, let me edit the file. In fact, if you go back to my website, I have clearly uh, specified the, the working AML file over here as well. Okay, so let's check this real quick. Uh, if I go back here, so these things you, you already know, right? I wanted to trigger this pipeline whenever I commit the code into the main branch. Plus, I also wanted to uh, you know, kickstart the pipeline manually as well. That's why I have this particular entry. Okay, so right now uh, we are going to use Java 11, but uh, we just want to make sure that, you know, uh, you need to add this particular entry as well. You need to specify the di distribution type here. So let's do that. And then we need to provide the path of the palm.xml file. So let's go ahead and then specify that as well. And then the workspace, this is where it gets a bit tricky. Uh, so I'm going to leave it like that. So I wanted to upload into this particular directory. So let's leave it like that. Okay. And then this is going to, so this is just for the build. Okay. So it's going to build and then upload the artifact into over here. And then this is for deployment. Okay. So, I mean, the name doesn't doesn't matter, production, that's what it is. And then let, let's just change the app name. So I want to say my web app. Same thing over here. Let's also change into my web app. Okay, perfect. And then it is going to deploy over here. So this is the most important thing, publish profile. So make sure that, you know, this is matching with whatever got created earlier, okay? I think that's it over there, but let me also verify over here whether anything is changed. Okay, great. I think everything is looking good. Let me go ahead and then click on commit changes. And then I'm going to provide a commit message, commit changes. So as soon as you commit the code, you can see here, right? For any code changes, it's gonna go ahead and then run the GitHub actions. So there you go. So the build already started running. So let's see. So you can clearly see here it has two different uh, you know stages. Wow! So it looks like this was able to complete the build part of it. Right now it is in the process of doing the deployment. Wow! Wonderful. Wow! So we got two green tick mark over here. Wonderful. So if I uh, click on actions again, there you go, guys. Do you all see that? So now we are able to clearly see that both the stages got completed. And then you would also know the URL here as well. If you want, you can click on the URL from here or, or we already have that URL over here, right? So, so we just need to say my web app here in the end. So it's gonna take few seconds. Wow, there you go guys. Do you all see that? So we are, we are able to see the expected output. But we can we can just still validate that. Let me actually make a small code change over here. So let me go to index.jsp. So like I said, it's a simple web application, Java-based web application. So let me add some code changes here. Let me add a few more lines of code here. Not a not a big deal. Okay. So commit changes. I'm gonna say pipeline. Commit changes. So as soon as you commit the code, it's going to trigger the pipeline. The build part is complete. Right now it is actually doing the deployment. Wow, so the deployment also got completed. So let's go ahead and then verify whether our code changes got pushed or not. Let me click on refresh. It's gonna take a few seconds. I know it is actually coming from the cache. Let me enter the new URL. Uh, you know what, let me use a Safari. 
So I'm using a new browser. Wow, there you go guys, do you all see that? So we are able to see the code changes. So yeah, so that's it guys, you know, that's how you can create a CSED pipeline using GitHub Actions in order to deploy your Java web application into Azure App Service. Thank you for watching this video guys.